Howdy folks, today we're going to be doing a follow-up video on these uh, cheapy eBay 1156 80 watt LEDs that I did a video on last fall. I'm going to link to it below in the description. Uh, really happy with them still. I've got about 12 hours on the machine. I run basically the lights all the time now, uh, so they're still working. Uh, longevity hasn't seemed to be an issue. Uh, but I wanted to do this video as a follow-up just to address a few comments that had come up on that video people asking questions and also a couple of mistakes that I made we're going to go to the shop now or the garage and we'll uh, we'll tackle those one at a time okay so the first thing we're going to address with these eBay 1156 bulbs is my error where I said LEDs are um, polarity sensitive so you have to make sure this is negative and this is positive. That's not the case, however. Oh, and I wondered if you hooked them up backwards, if it would blow the bulb. So let's try it. Again, we've got a 3S LiPo pack. I've just got the meter hooked up to it. It's putting out it's pretty much fully charged 12.5 volt, 52 volts DC. So we'll just do it the normal way. Negative on the uh, base, positive on the pin, and LED lights, no problem. So will it blow the LED or will it be safe if we reverse it? Holy smokes, she still lights. So the reason for that is these have a um, something called a rectifier in them, a rectifying bridge. And what that does, it doesn't matter which uh, way you've got the uh, polarity on these. These will work um, with this positive, this negative or vice versa. So no worries about blowing them up. If you hook them up backwards and you don't have to worry about checking your sockets in your riding mower if you know if this side is positive for whatever reason and if you're interested in how a rectifying bridge works I've actually got uh, one hooked up here we'll zoom into it so I've just built a really basic little uh, rectifying bridge circuit out of four diodes this is how they are configured uh, you've got two that are forward biased in this direction and two that are forward biased in this direction. You can tell by the little stripe on the top of them, meaning the positive will flow this way, but it won't flow that way. So if this is hooked up to your AC, uh, so that if in the cycle, if this one was positive, it will flow through that diode that way, but it won't flow down to the negative. So this will be positive here. And on this side, this is negative in the AC cycle. Won't flow up that way, but it will flow this way. And then in the ha second half of the cycle, where this one becomes negative, uh, won't flow that way, but it will flow down to here. This one is now positive. It will flow up to this and won't flow down that way. So no matter what happens in the AC cycle, this is always going to be flow. Uh, the diodes are going to be allowing positive to be on this side and negative always on this side. That's all a rectifying bridge does. But it will also, uh, the same way that alternating current will be rectified to positive and negative, if you put DC into these, if you swap the polarities, you're still going to always get positive and negative up here. And we can test that. Okay, so as it is right now, I've just got our little rectifying diode or bridge here. I've hooked it up to AC. It's getting 9 volts AC from a little 9 volt uh, uh, transformer. 9 volts AC is coming into this bridge and we can see that on here. Oh, 8.96 roughly. We're in our AC voltage scale. It says volts AC. But if we hook, if we change these probes over to the positive and negative side of the rectifying bridge, Okay, now we see our voltage basically drops to next to nothing on the AC scale. But if we go to DC, you know, we're getting DC rectified voltage uh, out of the uh, little bridge here. Now you'll see it's roughly, uh, what is it, about 1.3 volts lower than our input voltage. And the reason for that is most diodes have somewhere between a 0.6 and 0.7 voltage drop across them. So even though these diodes are being fed 9 volts AC, uh, after the voltage passes through two diodes, it'll drop you know, around 1.3 volts. Now that we know how a rectifying bridge works, let's just test it with a little LED. Um, this is just a little blue LED, and here's our 3S lithium pack. Here's our two wires from it. 
and we'll hook this up. This is the positive side of the LED, the one that I've got the uh, currenting or current limiting resistor hooked up to, and the positive, and as you can see, the LED lights. If we reverse that, however, it won't. So that's what I meant by LEDs being um, polarity sensitive. Didn't blow anything, it just doesn't work when you hook it up in reverse uh, polarity. However, with our little rectifying bridge here, let's see if we can get it to work in both directions. So here's the red from our rectifying bridge, our positive, and our black. Just make sure that LED is in frame. And then the two whites coming off of the uh, little rectifying bridge, we'll hook those up to our positive and negative coming from our battery pack. And we'll watch the meter as well. So we'll just hook it up in this direction first. So LED is lit, reading positive 11.05 uh, volts DC. Now we'll reverse these. And that voltage should be rectified. Again, so it's still working even with it reversed. We're still getting positive 1105 and the LED is lighting um, because that little uh, bridge, rectifying bridge, is um, giving us positive on either side independent of what, uh, what the input uh, polarity is. So what uh, makes that kind of neat with these is, one, well, you don't have to worry about all that messing around I talked about in that original video about to make sure your positive and your negatives are correct. You could plug this into the mower and it really wouldn't matter if they're backwards. Uh, and what else is neat with this is it'll run on AC. Here's our AC source, our 9 volt AC, and it will light on AC as well because of that rectifying bridge. And what's uh, one application I can think right off the bat, and that's why I bought more of these, was for low voltage landscape lighting. A lot of low voltage landscape lighting takes those uh, standard incandescent 1156 bulbs. Um, however, the step down transformers on them, few of them are rectified. Most of them are running AC to the sockets because it's an incandescent bulb, doesn't matter. Uh, however, with these bulbs, um, you could run them direct off AC as well. So. Just another kind of little interesting tidbit about them. Now I'll actually get to the actual light output of these. Uh, so we'll do that uh, next. Real quick before we get to the actual light output of these versus an incandescent, uh, I just wanted to show you another mistake I made. In that original video, remember I mentioned that they don't get dim or bright as the lawnmower RPM changes. And I contributed that to the low current draw that these use over an incandescent. You know, that still helps, but I think the main reason is these actually also have a voltage regulator in them. And I've just got this hooked up to a variable uh, DC power supply. And we'll watch the voltage here, and you'll see how it, when it gets up to around 12.2, 12.3 volts, and that's where it's being regulated. Anything higher than that, you know, we'll get up to almost 20 volts here. It will not get any brighter after it hits that 12.2 volt or 12.3 uh, threshold voltage. Uh, so these are also, not only are they rectified, they're regulated as well. I'll just start dialing this up. Uh, their diodes start lighting at about 8.5 volts DC. And we're going, this is getting pretty bright, I'm just gonna cover it up. So there, right there is where, it, so about 12.5 volts is where that must be where the voltage regulator is. And any higher I go, they were right up to 20.38 volts. Didn't get any brighter after the 12.3 or 12.5 roughly. All right, just, so right around 12.5, that must be where the voltage regulator is in them. And so it's safe to run them even at higher voltages, it looks like. Not that I'd recommend it, but um, I just wanted to point that out. That's probably the main reason why you don't get that fluctuation. Uh, is because they do have a regulator built into them. Next up is our light output test. Now in that original video I said, oh they're so much brighter. And you know what? Yes, that is subjective. That's what I was seeing. And the other thing is, you know, LEDs because of the, you know, this is a cool white and at that color temperature, roughly probably 6,000 K, 5,000 Kelvin, uh, our eyes pick up that light easier. 
So do these actually put out as much or more light than a normal incandescent? Light meter is out, let's check it out. So we'll do the incandescent first. Um, again, powering it off of the 3S uh, LiPo battery. Okay, and I'm just going to hold this directly above the light meter sensor. And I'm just, I'm going to, so I've got both roughly at the same height. I want to make sure the bulb's right at the top of the uh, frame here in the video. Now, there's probably some glare coming off the screen, but um, that's too bad. It's probably can't see it, but it's, so pointing straight down like this, it's reading 1,850 lux roughly. And if we go on the side, uh, we're at 1,850, 1,900 lux. Now one thing with an incandescent bulb, when you add on on the filament, there's not as much light output. So here, edge on on the filament on the side, we're at what? 550, 600 lux. So that's the incandescent. Now I'll do the LED. Same scenario, we'll shoot it straight down. One of the comments I got was uh, an incandescent will shine more light out the front than these things will. So we'll check that out. So first we'll shine down. Again, we'll put it roughly at the same distance away from the light sensor. So here we're at almost 3000 lux. So definitely brighter. Shining straight down. And if we go on edge, again, we'll try to get it the same distance. Boy, I didn't really need my sunglasses on. Uh, we're at about 1200, 1300 lux, 1250, 1300. Now, of course, you know, that's just, uh, you know, right close up to the light meter. Let's actually see the difference in the riding mower. Um, we'll hold the light meter approximately 12 feet away from the riding mower with an incandescent bulb in one side and one of these LEDs in the other and see what the light readout is on that. To give the incandescent light the benefit of the doubt, um, as we know, they get brighter at higher voltage. I've got a um, 15 volt power supply that I've hooked up. And if we look at the uh, incandescent on the floor here, uh, we'll just turn that power supply on. There, and it just got brighter. And we'll start looking at the patterns and then we'll measure the light outputs. So one of the questions was the, uh, the light patterns. And I'm just gonna show the two uh, patterns coming out from the incandescent and the LED. As you can see, the LED is a little, uh, the light pattern spread a little bit more. Seems to be a little more faceted than the incandescent, but generally they're very similar. And again, most, well, I'm going to say all of that has to do with the reflector. And that's the other thing I should mention. You know, this is a John Deere uh, 100 series or D series and you know you can expect the same type of light output or light pattern from it if you've got the same kind of mower but every mower if it's a Husqvarna or a Craftsman they're gonna have different reflector housings and that naturally is going to affect the uh, the light output and the dispersion pattern and another comment was that uh, John Deere's have dirty light housings well you know, all lawn tractors, none of them have sealed light housings, and if they're dirty, uh, clean them. You know, they're easy to take the light assemblies out. This thing's five years old. I've had to clean it once. Take the light assembly out, swish soap and water around inside of it, let it air dry overnight. Good to go. Once again, the LED does seem to be casting a brighter light, and it's more diffused. But it might just be because it's brighter but the light meter will show us for sure. So let's get that rascal out. So just looking at the incredibly boring and detailed crunch door surface. So this is the side with the LED. And if we go along here, there's the incandescent side. And I've put two little red dots um, right at the same height as the uh, headlight assemblies are. So we'll do the LED reading first with the light meter. So, um, 
It's reading 54 point, oh, roughly 57, there's 60, 62, so, some, so around 60 lux is, uh, is what we're getting on the LED side. 49, 50, 51, 52. So, roughly 10 lux difference between the LED and the incandescent. So, the LED is brighter, not by huge amounts, but uh, it is brighter. Again, might have something to do with the, uh, you know, with your, with your lenses on the machine, the, the headlight housings and how they reflect and refract the light, but it's marginally brighter, um, as indicated by the meter, and visually it looks brighter just because our eyes see that color temperature um, uh, better because it's closer to daylight. Um, so hopefully that answers any remaining questions and gives you an idea on uh, you know light output um, between the two. Cheers, folks.